Now it's hard to believe, but 18 years ago people would travel from as far away as France to come to a Yorkshire nightclub. Since it began in 1991, Back to Basics has achieved a legendary status. So we sent Johnny Nelson to take a look at the UK's longest running club night. We should warn you that this film contains some flashing lights. In the late 80s, Britain was gripped by acid house fever. Every weekend, thousands of young people would meet in disused warehouses and fields to dance to a new sound, which had originated from Chicago, house music. But concerns over public safety and drug use saw new laws brought in to stop the parties. Ironically, it was the death of the acid house scene that brought about the birth of Back to Basics. Friends Dave Beer and Alistair Cook were so fed up of having nowhere to go that played their kind of music, they decided to set up their own club in Leeds back in 1991. The Criminal Justice Bill had come in so we couldn't do illegal parties anymore and we were a bit tired of that sort of white glove whistle blowing, glow stick waving sort of rave culture that had happened, you know. Within weeks word had spread and hundreds were being turned away at the door. One of my best memories is within, I think early in 1992, went to the top floor, looked out the window, looked down the street, and the whole street was just a roadblock. Cars had just given up trying to get up, and they would bring it. We took the top floor, it was called the Chocolate Factory, and turned it into the Music Factory, and, uh, but we did it in a gay club purposely because we knew that would keep a lot of, um, you know, the elements away, you know, that we didn't want in there, you know, the wrong kind of people. 18 months after its launch, co-founder Ali Cook was killed in a car crash. But Dave decided to carry on staying true to their original plan, to play house music to like-minded people. It's got its purest, purest roots in, in, in classic house music. And I think that um, when other trends have come and gone and, and you know, different genres have become more um, popular than others, Basics has been pretty consistent in, in just quality house music. Although he's one of the world's biggest DJs, Pete Tongue has only played Basics a handful of times. A daunting experience, even for him. I think of all the clubs I've probably played in the UK over the years, you kind of get the slight feeling that you're kind of intruding a little bit. <laughs> People will travel from all over the country to Back to Basics, but its most loyal followers have always been closer to home. Some are still involved, others just happy to reminisce. Dave asked me if I, if I wanted to do the job and, um, and I was up for it and I thought, yeah, you know, three months maybe, we yeah. might get out of it. You know, 18 years later, I still can't believe it myself. It was just brilliant, the vibe was brilliant, you know, the people were brilliant and I think, you know, back then, there was, because there was nothing else like it, you just met people that you would never normally meet, you know, yeah. from different backgrounds. Yeah. The most uh, a brilliant thing that happened to me at Basics has got to be the fact that, and this is a bit, <clears throat> but I met my husband. Yeah. Did you? Uh, yeah, Jacob. At the end of the night, he asked, he asked me to catch the bus home, and I just looked at him and I said, Do I look like I catch the bus? <laughs> I said, My mate's not well, we're getting taxi home, he can come home with us for a tea, and then ever since then, he's lived with me. <laughs> it wasn't long before the music press had cottoned on to the popularity of Back to Basics, and in particular, it's larger than life host. Most of the ideas I've had from they've been triggered off by, say, things that have happened in the past, like punk things, you know, like we, we used to invite the press and not let them in to, into the club, but that was a sex pistol thing. It's a way of getting attention, you know, not letting people in, which people want to get in even more. Even as a child growing up in Pontifact, Beer was obsessed with music. A bit of a punk maverick who tour managed bands. A desk job was never in the offing. The attitude that, that revolves around Dave Beer and everything that surrounds him very much had that cavalier kind of, I don't know, working class spirit about it. It was, it was people doing good from nothing around the joys and love of music and I think Basics carried that through right from the beginning right through to today. It's just got a spirit and a, a ballsy attitude about it which is very much what Acid House was built on. And it's that attitude that comes through in the club's tongue-in-cheek flyers. The most memorable, a take on the iconic Sex Pistols album cover, even sold in Sotheby's. As the popularity of dance music grew, the scene became more mainstream. Clubbing got more corporate. There was money to be made. 
but it's a route back to basics. Refuse to go down. When all the other clubs were brown nosing all these labels, you know, I was quite happy to not take that sponsorship money because, you know, we we're, a, as I say, we we're an underground club. We we're a cool, you know, club. Do you ever regret not capitalising on the commercialisation of, of dance music like Cream and the Ministry of Sound? No, no, not in the slightest. I pride myself in that, you know. I mean, we couldn't sell baseball caps because you couldn't get in at the club with a baseball cap. You know, it was like sell them an art and then say you're not coming in in that would have been ridiculous, you know. They're not big and flashy and they're not, they're not like, there's not thousands of them around the world and they can't replicate it three times in three cities on the same Saturday night. They can't do that. It, re it revolves around a small group of people and their vision. And, um, and that's what it is. Leeds isn't London, it's not like we've got this big celebrity culture. No, About no. the most famous person used to come in was uh, Butch Paul Dingle from Emmerdale. <laughs> he, he was our, he was our, he was our <laughs> A-list celebrity. He's like, Butch is in. We're, we're doing well tonight. I've been in the basics <laughs> night when Zach Dingle's Zach been Dingle's in. Zach Dingle's been in, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 When we were at the music factory, um, fashion designer, Jean Galliano. Used to come in, yeah. 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 I remember it. You have the worst shoes I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Grey, plastic, loafers. I let him in because I thought he was wearing them ironically. <laughs> the club has always been able to attract some of the world's best house music DJs, and this lot are coming for American Claude Von Stroh. It's the crowd that, 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 that that's where the energy is. There's nothing that can ever like be any anywhere near what the, what with the energy that we have in Leeds. It's a great honour to be a guest there, but Dave's never you know he's never really wanted to play the game of of, of booking the biggest DJs for the biggest fees and, and blah blah blah. It's been it's really much more purist, you know. I mean they they run their club I suppose you could say a bit like um a passionate blog these days, or, or in the old days you'd call it a fanzine. Over the years, Beer has booked the likes of Daft Punk and Basement Jacks, long before the Grammys and Brit Awards. I remember telling Basement Jacks as well, you know, how big they were going to be, but they didn't see it, you know, at the time, but now they say, like, oh Dave, I remember, you know, you telling us. The Chemical Brothers, you know, you know the, the best radio faces you've ever seen, you know, and like, you know, how big are they? It's a way of life for us, and always has been. It's like the, you know, we, it's what we do. You know, I don't you can't imagine us doing anything else. We like, we make, we live, breathe, and, and sleep, and eat. Basics isn't full of. You know, mid thirties, forty year old people still still partying, it's evolved and it, it evolves through the DJs you book and the artists you book and making yourself relevant in in those kind of ways. I think basics in Leeds is, is an institution and it and it, it it wouldn't work as well anywhere else. It's probably fair to say the house and days of clubbing seen back in the nineties have gone. Most of the clubs that started around the same time as back to basics are no longer around. So it's remarkable, it's still managing to attract a new generation of clubbers. <laughs>